Hey everybody, welcome back. In the previous video, we talked about how to take the output of a program and put that in a file using redirection. Now, what we're gonna be doing is something similar, but it's a little bit different. So if you wanna take the output of a program and use it as the input to another program, that's what this video is about. And that concept is known as piping. So you're gonna use the pipe symbol, which you can find right above the enter key, right below the delete key on Mac. And here's what it's gonna look like. So that is the symbol. And we're going to use that instead of the greater than symbol. So we'll start with just any command. And I'm just gonna continue to use ls just cause it's simple. And at this point, you know, it's one of the few commands that we really understand in a lot of detail. And what we can do is output some directory such as forward slash etc. So this is going to display a lot of directories and files. And based off of the previous video, we mentioned that we could redirect this to some file. We'll just call it files. And we can see that output by saying cat files and it shows the same exact thing. Now we just lose the colors because we're just looking at the output of a text file. If you wanted to scroll through this giant list really nicely, you can use the less command. So you can say less files. And now we can scroll through this using the arrow keys. And then when we're done, we can hit the Q key. And that's gonna bring us back to where we were. So it doesn't pollute our entire terminal, it just opens up a new application. The challenge here, or what the pipe can allow us to do here, is if we want that same behavior, but we don't wanna to have to save it to a file first. So we took our output of the program, saved it to a file, and then we used the less program to scroll through it. We can bypass that file by just doing the ls command, or whatever command it is, and piping it to the next command, which in this case is the less command. So here's what that's gonna look like. We're gonna say some command, and instead of redirecting to a file, which is what we did, we had files, we're going to just skip that process and pipe it to a new command, less. And now we get the same exact behavior where we can scroll through this, but we didn't have to use an intermediary file. That's just a really simple example, which is a great way to scroll through output of a command without having to create a file for just that purpose. So basically, this less command takes an input, but that input is being given by the output of this command here. So this allows us to create chains, and you'll often see long chains of numerous pipe commands in a row, where the output of one goes to the input of the next, and it goes down that chain to do some kind of processing. You can basically create a pipeline, take some input, do a bunch of transformations, and have some output. That's one use case of piping. So to summarize, for files, you do redirection. For programs, you do piping. Let's see a quick example of creating a chain. So we'll go with that same command, but before we pass it to less, what we're gonna do is we're going to put another command in here and we will use the sort program. And this is actually going to sort all of these lines. So when you look at this, all the ones that start with D are on top, and that actually means it's a directory. So we can go through here and see all the directories on top and then eventually we'll get to the files down here which do not have the D at the beginning. So that is how you can sort an output. And let's go through a quick example of doing this with some more simple output. So we'll exit out of that and what we're going to do is we're going to clear the screen and what I want to do is say nano and let's just create a file called names. So nano is a text editor that is inside of the terminal. You could also use something else if you prefer. We'll hit enter. Now yours will probably be empty. I was just testing this out. So what you wanna do is just put a couple of names in here. We'll just say Caleb, Billy, Kara, and Sabrina. And the way you exit is control X and then Y to save and then enter to save. So now when we say cat names, you can see we have Caleb, Billy, Kara, and Sabrina. Well, we could use that sort by saying cat name and then pipe this to sort. And, uh, sorry, names, cat names, and we have Billy, Caleb, Kara, Sabrina. There's a lot of other things we could do. So for an example, if you want to see how many names there are, you could say cat names, pipe this to a program word count, hyphen L for lines, hit enter, and you get four. Let's go through another example. Let's edit this file. We'll say nano names, and I want to add a title up here, students. And we'll exit by control X, yes to save, enter for that file name. And now when we say cat names, well, we don't wanna include this line here so we can have a 
step in our pipeline to remove that. So before we get the sort here, what we could do is we could pass it to another program, which is tail, and we can remove the first line by saying hyphen n plus two. We're not gonna get into all the details of tail, I'm just showing you a quick example, but that'll get rid of that first line. Now, this also shows the importance of ordering. If we were to switch this around, you're gonna get a different result. So if we sort first, well, basically it's going to sort it and then remove the first one. So in this situation, Billy gets removed because that's the first one that comes in the list and students stays here. So that's not what we want. We wanna make sure we pipe it in the right order. So this one goes into this one, which goes into this one. There we go. So that's a quick introduction to piping. There's a ton of stuff you can do. This is just meant to be an introduction because we actually needed this skill to show what's coming up next, which is the T command. So if you remember from the previous video, we were talking about standard output and standard error, and I showed a table that showed the different options, and one of them had the command T. So if you wanna understand what the T program does, well, you first need to understand a little bit about piping. So we got that down, now we can learn about T. If you haven't watched the previous video and you wanna know what I'm talking about, the table that I'm referring to can be found in this question, how do I save terminal output to a file? And it talks about all the different options down here in a table. We've talked about all of these here, and next up we have pipe T. So that's what we're gonna talk about in the next episode, so stay tuned. If you enjoy this content, please be sure to hit like, subscribe, and most of all, I encourage you guys to have a good rest of your day. It's a lot of things to look forward to, including some freaking sick videos, so stay tuned. See you then.